The next topic we'll be talking about is file sharing. What is file sharing? Well, Technopedia has a long definition about what file sharing is, but in a nutshell, what file sharing is, is it's sharing files between different computers. And there's multiple ways that that can be done. Now, how are the files shared, you might ask? Well, we can share them through uh, burning a CD and then handing that CD to a friend of yours. Uh, for instance, if you wanted to share with them a copy of a music CD that you got, uh, it could be done through thumb drive, uh, where you add your files to a thumb drive, and then uh, the thumb drive is handed to someone else. They then copy those files from the thumb drive onto their computer. Uh, you could do it through a network drive. Uh, if you're working inside a network environment, like an office environment or a school environment, and you have access to shared drives, then you can copy those files through the network. But one of the most common ways that files are being shared today are through peer-to-peer -peer systems. What a peer-to-peer -peer system is, is it's a system, a soft, it's a software-based application that gets loaded onto your computer that then allows you to share your files with people on that same network. And in some cases, this network could have hundreds of thousands of people all sharing files. So, for instance, in that case, what you may want to do is, or what you may do is, search for a file uh, through a search uh, through a search engine and then it would find that file and that file could be on multiple different computers within that shared network that peer-to-peer -peer network and then those files could be downloaded from that network to your computer now the next question that you probably want to ask yourself is is it legal well there's some elements that we have to answer before we can really take a look at that. So the first thing we want to do is we want to break that down into two parts. The first part is going to be whether or not the programs that are used in order to do file sharing, uh, for instance, the peer-to-peer -peer file sharing that we talked about earlier, are those programs legal? The second part that we're going to be taking a look at is the data that gets shared using that peer-to-peer -peer system or the software that was developed to create that peer-to-peer -peer sharing system. So first of all, taking a look at the programs. Um, in order to share files with others using a peer-to-peer -peer program, you need to have a software program such as BitTorrent, uh, LimeWare, Napster, or Kazaa. Those are all programs that can be used in order to do peer-to-peer -peer file, uh, file sharing. Now, are these programs legal? Yes, they are. There is nothing illegal about owning these programs um, or nothing illegal for the companies that created these programs. These programs are perfectly legal. Now, the next question, though, is what about the data or the files that get shared by using these programs? Are those files legal? Well, that gets a little dicey. They may be legal they may not be legal or um, sometimes it's questionable so this is where things get a little bit fuzzy so we're gonna try to break that down for you and make it a little bit more understandable and clear things up so first of all uh, let's take a look at what is definitely illegal any copyrighted materials such as movies music software programs television shows all of these copyrighted materials are without question illegal to be shared now um, when we talk about copyrighted materials again most of the things that you're going to be watching most of if for instance if you bought a cd that cd is copyrighted if you paid for a software program and that software program had a license associated with it it's copyrighted um, if you, uh, the TV shows that you watch on TV, those are all copyrighted. If you downloaded software programs that you used, uh, that you got from your uh, app store, that's where it starts to get a little bit fuzzy. Are all of those programs that you download from the app store illegal to share? Maybe, maybe not. Some of those are free. If they're free, then they can be shared. But in most cases, it's not necessary if you're downloading it from the App Store. You just tell your friend about, hey, I got this great new free app. I downloaded it from the App Store. Here's where you can find it. Uh, so it doesn't have to be shared. They can just go get it themselves. So now, <clears throat> what, what are items are free? Because it sounds like you just about covered everything that you'd want to have, right? Well, there are some items that are free. 
a little bit boring, but the list is you facts are not copyrighted. Okay, so those are not illegal to share. Uh, any works that are created by the federal government, we're going to be taking a look at that in a little bit more depth uh, in the later slide. But any works that are created by the federal government. Uh, any works that are not fixed in a tangible form of expression. In other words, it's not written down. Okay, It's not stored in a file somewhere. It's just something uh, that was perhaps heard. Uh, any ideas, concepts, principles, or discoveries. Those are not copyrighted. Any words, phrases, or familiar symbols. And any works that are in the public domain. Uh, these things are all legal to copy, legal to share. Now let's take a look at each one of these a little bit closer. Facts are any, uh, uh, any facts that you share, uh, whether it's in documents rather than programs, those are not copyrighted. So facts are those simple things such as what is the tallest building in the world. That would be a fact. Okay? Um, what parks exist inside the United States park system. Those are all facts. Those cannot be copyrighted and those are legal to share. The federal copyright laws do not cover any materials that are created by the government. Now, this covers a wide range of things, but some of the more common items would be things like judicial decisions. So after, uh, after someone goes to court and the court case is decided, then the judge writes their decision about uh, why they decided uh, whether the person was guilty or not guilty. And those decisions then get published. Those are not copyrighted. Any federal statutes, okay, those are the laws that, uh, that we follow. Uh, you can copy those and distribute those at will. Any speeches by any federal officials, uh, those are, are not protected. Those can all be copyrighted and, or those can all be uh, copied and shared. The uh, next category is works not fixed in a tangible form. So as I mentioned before, that, that means that that's something that has not yet been written down. So if you've seen something or you've heard something uh, that you want to write about and it's not been, uh, it's not been, uh, put into a recorded form uh, as of yet, then you can, uh, you can share that information and that's not considered uh, to be copyrighted. However, it is wise to cite anything that you are writing down that you have heard because it could be considered plagiarism later on uh, if you don't give credit to the person who actually made the statements. Next is an area that um, is, is a bit more interesting, and that is public domain. Now, any works that were published before 1923 are no longer copyright protected. Any works that were published between 1923 and 1977 that did not have a copyright notice are not copyright protected. So those works are considered to be inside what we call the public domain. The public domain is, uh, is, an, is an area where these, these works are collected. And this also includes not only, uh, not only movies and books, but also music. Uh, so commonly, you'll find classical music uh, that's, uh, that's easily available inside the public domain and can be downloaded and shared. Now, interestingly enough, you'll also find things that are in the public domain that other people have decided to sell which, interestingly enough, that's also legal if someone wanted to purchase. For instance, uh, if you made copies of a classical work that's in the public domain and then you choose to sell those CDs, that is also legal uh, because that work is no longer copyrighted. So if somebody, per if somebody wanted to download it for free, they could. If you chose to sell it, somebody chose to purchase it from you, that also is legal. Now, also, a uh, part of what is um, considered uh, in the public domain is what is called Creative Commons, and that's kind of a special part of the public domain because those are current works that people have chosen to place into the public domain. Now, you have to be careful with those. It's not quite the same level of, um, of uh, use that you can, can, you can uh, incorporate with those as you would with a document that was definitely in the public domain uh, because of its copy, because of the fact that it was created before 1923. Um, in the case of the Creative Commons, people have chosen to put things inside the public domain, but they do have some licensing that they can apply to that. So for instance, they may say that it's okay for you to use a picture that they've taken or a song that they've created 
as long as you give them credit for it. So you do have to be careful in how you use items that have been placed in the public domain uh, through the use of the Creative Commons. So um, it sounds like that stuff that we're talking about that's not copyright protected isn't real exciting. So you then ask yourself, well, you know, I'd really like to get some movies. I'd like to get some music. That's what I'm really interested in. So what happens if I just decide to ignore those copyrights and I decide to just download something off of, Bit, uh, off of BitTorrent or Napster or one of those sites? Who's going to care? Well, you are being watched. And the two, company, the two organizations that are predominantly watching uh, for this kind of illegal downloading activity are the Recording Industry Association of America and the Motion Picture Association of America. Um, both of these, and, and the way that they do this is they have, they actually go on to these sites, like BitTorrent is one of the most common ones. Napster also got hit uh, several years back, but they will actually go on to these sites, register onto these sites, and start looking for their materials that are being, that are being shared on those sites. So they'll look for their movies, they'll look for their music that are being shared on these sites. And one of the common activities that has recently been occurring is they will get a list of uh, that they will then once they see that their materials is being shared on that network they will then go to the courts and put and have the courts uh, give them the right to petition that uh, internet service provider and get a list of the IP addresses that have all been sharing those files downloading those files and so uh, once they get that IP that list of IPs uh, they can then start going back and looking for, through the Internet service providers, who the owners are of those IP addresses. They will then send them a notice uh, that, uh, that they are being sued in court for violating the, uh, the copyright for that material. And that's uh, in, in the uh, articles that I've read and in the, uh, the uh, news, uh, news information that I've seen, it seems like commonly they're looking at the number between uh, two and three thousand dollars in order to settle out a court for this, but they're hitting large numbers of people. Uh, in some cases, thousands of people uh, are being sent these notices, and most of them are choosing to pay rather than fight this in court. And so, this is one of the ways that uh, that you could be facing uh, one of the legal concerns that you could be facing. So either and, and one of the reasons that people tend to pay instead of fight it in court because courts are expensive. So two thousand dollars may be cheap compared to spending a day in court, which may cost five to ten thousand dollars. So people are choosing just to go ahead and pay that instead of continuing to uh, or in, in, instead of challenging it and going to court. So you have to be very careful because if you do get caught, it can be expensive. Not only are you looking at the possibility of court cases, but you could also be looking at jail time. You could be looking at excessive fines into the hundreds of thousands of dollars because in some cases they choose to fine you based upon the, uh, the, the nature of how many items that you've downloaded. So if your fines are maybe a, a few thousand dollars for a song or movie, but you've downloaded maybe hundreds of movies or hundreds of songs, then it could get uh, that much more expensive for you. So, um, file sharing, it's not something that you want to do. It's uh, not a safe thing to do. You are being watched. So, please, if you've got any questions about uh, what, you may, what, what may be right or wrong or what you're downloading, get with your parents. Let them know what you're doing because uh, they would be the people that would be contacted first in, in the case that um, you were caught and you had to... Uh, possibly deal with the legal situation. So let them know and take care of it. Don't download files.